everybody, Nigel Saunders here. My wife has left for a conference in Toronto. She'll be gone for two and a half days. So I'm in charge of feeding the chickens and the ducks. So I have to do that four times a day. So let's go in the barn and have a look. This is the barn behind me. Let's go in. I think they'll be really excited to see me. Hello. Hello. Now, is there anyone in here? There's lots of you guys in here. Hello! What an excited bunch of faces. <laughs> Hello? I guess you guys all want your food and water. Yeah, everyone's excited. Oh man, hello. Well, and you ducks, are you guys excited too? Yeah, of course you are. All right, guys. Let's get your food bowl cleaned out here. I'm gonna tip the shavings out. Let's clean it out a bit. There we go. And we gotta move this. Excuse me. Just gotta shake that out so you've got, you know, a place for your spill food to land. And then I'll get the food. So you guys get a bowl half full. There you go. Oh my goodness, you want some there? There you go. And you want some? And the duck over here, you want some too? There you go. And there's some of the special duck here. Oh yeah. Where's Giselle? Where's Giselle? Okay ducks, it's your turn. Um, this duck over here has to be hand fed for some reason. How's that? Are you getting lost there? Um, we'll feed the one over here too. Here's some more for you. There you go. It's okay. It's just a camera. I know you're not used to a camera. It's okay. I'll move the camera away. How's that? Oh, you're gonna peg me? Okay. <laughs> All right. It's food. Come on. There you go. <laughs> so I get the water. There's a barrel in here with a hand pump. And this gives them their fresh rainwater. So I just pull up their water dishes. And then it goes down here. These guys have a big bowl. There you go. They're all drinking. You guys like that water, don't you? Hey, you guys all like the water. These guys are still eating over here. Excuse me, excuse me. You guys are drinking. And they're eating. Yeah. So I gotta get water up to these guys now. 
so we'll get their water. All right, and that will go over here. Watch out, girl. Yeah, I'm gonna give you your water over here. No, no, no. Okay, there we go. There you go. Everyone's drinking their water there. Looks good. Yeah, they'll be fighting with each other. And I have to give water to the other guys too. So I'll have to go in back with that little rooster that goes after me. He's a, he's a bit of a pest. <laughs> but what can you do? Luckily he's so small that he, he never hurts when he pecks you. Okay, I'm going in. Wish me luck. Hi guys. Watch out guys. Okay. I'm here. You guys want some food, I think. Oh. Oh. So I think I'm all done here. Everyone's fed. They're all watered. So I'll come back in, I don't know, maybe three or four hours and do it all over again. So everything's looking pretty good outside here. We had a bit of a thaw yesterday, it was raining, uh, but today it's frozen over again. So I think it's time to go inside and do some bonsai work here in the bonsai zone. So it's the next day now. The weather has changed again. It's gone from sunny and cold yesterday to stormy today. It's really windy. The snow is whipping through the air. And I'm out here, I, I wanna show you some trees. And you're probably wondering, well, why do I wanna come out on a rotten day like today to show you trees? And the answer is because it's sort of like fog. Uh, the snow whipping through the air kind of isolates the tree. So you see the silhouette of the tree and kind of a white background. So that's the, I'm trying to get those shots of the trees. We're gonna look at the structure of the tree and you know, the features of it. They're, these are trees I like. So we'll head outside now and try and do this. It's gonna be quite cold and windy. Um, I'll probably get a lot of microphone noise. So you'll just have to hang in there. Maybe I'll just do a voiceover or I don't know. We'll see how bad it is. All right, let's head outdoors. So the first tree I'm going to show you is over here by the water park. The maple trees in behind me there. We'll go in and have a close up look at it. So this is a tree I really like. It's a, I guess you call it a broom style tree or sort of an umbrella canopy type tree. Um, so let's look at the tree. It's not a, you know, a huge thick tree. It's quite slim, but it's also very elegant, I think. Let's start with the roots. Let's go in and have a look at them. It's got quite a wide buttressing root base. I'll go around and count the number of surface roots. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Maybe 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So we have about eh, maybe 27. 27 surface roots. There's looking up at the tree. Got some nice lichen on the trunk. So yeah, a really wide buttressing uh, root base on it. You can see these roots here. Very nice. Look at the hollows in there. It's incredible, it's almost like a cave in here between all the roots, the buttressing type roots. Yeah, a beautiful root base for a maple. 
Here's another one, a big hollow in here. Really something, another big hollow here. A few crossing routes down here, but you know, nothing major. All these surface routes are quite radial. And they're of, they're of a fairly even size, except this one's quite large here. It kind of comes down as one big root and then divides into one, two, three, four, four roots. So you can see there's also a swelling on the trunk where that root goes up. It's kind of a, there's a bit of a cavity there in the trunk. If you can see it from around here. Yeah, so you, that bulge from that thick root goes way up to the trunk to feed the branches up there. So definitely your, you know, your root structure supports your upper structure on the tree. So now let's go look at the upper structure of the tree and kind of examine the form and, uh, you know, the branch structure. So we'll step back from the tree now. So here's the branch structure from the distance. You can see it comes up as a single trunk. It uh, has some inverse taper and it flares out. There's one, two, three, four, maybe five major upright trunks coming from almost one spot there. We'll uh, walk around the tree and just have a look at that junction point from a few different angles. Uh, sometimes they look better from one angle than another. You don't see that inverse taper so much from some of the other angles. So, yeah, like over here, you can't see any inverse taper at all, really. So it can depend on the view. Um, if you have a bonsai that has this type of structure, you know, there may be an angle that minimizes the reverse taper and makes the tree look more attractive. You can see at the back of the tree here, there's kind of two branches or upright trunks off to the sides and then there's two branches that go vertically there almost together. A very unusual structure for a tree but uh, looks really good though. And then all the branches are fanning out, all the major trunks. And then as you get near the top, you get a lot of crisscrossing kind of branches and trunks that fill in the crown of the canopy. So that's what you want. The, the one trunk's almost vertical there in the middle. I think I gotta get out of this wind. There we go. I'm out of the wind over here. Um, but you can still see the tree though. There. Yeah, so if we look at that upper structure, all the major trunks kind of fan out, except for that one vertical one, and then all the secondary type of branch structure starts filling in the canopy up top. So that's what you want in your bonsai trees also. I think the root base is probably at its best from this angle, its widest. But the upper part isn't. Uh, all these branches kind of go vertical and they don't really spread out or flow nicely. It's not too bad, but it wouldn't be my choice of a front view. That canopy is fantastic though. It's huge, really wide and spreading. Really good shade tree. So that's tree number one on a cold, wintry day. I'll head back and we'll go visit our second tree. So that was a maple tree we had a look at there. I'm not sure what type of maple it is. I would have to look at the leaves in summer to, uh, to find out. The next tree I'm going to look at now is an oak tree. And I don't know what kind of oak tree it is. Um, it could be a red oak. I'm not sure, a white oak. I don't think it's a white oak. I think it's probably a red oak, but uh, I really like the structure of it. So let's go have a look at that next. So here's the oak tree. I hope you can see it in the background here. Um, so let's go in and have a look at it. So here's the base of the tree. It's really, really large. Um, I don't know if you can, can't really get an idea of the size of it, but yeah, really large surface roots coming down. There's some ivy growing up it. 
There's a view looking up the tree. Beautiful oak tree. I'll try and count the surface roots. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's about twelve major surface roots on the tree. It is a massive tree. Now, I think the thing to notice on this tree is the emergence angle of the branches, how they all come out sort of like horns on the tree. There's no branches that are really horizontal. They all kind of come at an upwards angle. The thickest branches are the ones that go vertical. The ones that are more horizontal are smaller. Yeah, an epic tree. So a major trunk going all the way up. Uh, I might divide a little bit. Yeah, it divides a little bit towards the crown. But still kind of has that dominant trunk line. And then these other branches kind of almost grow up as secondary trunks almost like a separate tree growing beside the main tree there. So yeah, a really, really beautiful oak tree. Yeah, it just caught my eye when I was walking by one day. So there's the leaves on it. I think it might be a white oak, that's what I'm guessing, an old white oak. Yeah, there's some squirrel's nests up in the tree there. <laughs> Just filming the oak tree, it's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I would guess um, probably 160 years old at least. Yeah, that's what. Probably that's even higher, maybe in getting. That's what we figured. The, the house is 1872. Is it? Yeah. Is this your house here? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I hope you didn't mind me filming your tree. No, no, not I'm at all. I'm a tree lover. Not at all. <laughs> there we have it. I was just talking to the owner. He thinks it's a black oak. So, wonderful tree. I think that's probably it for today, for, you know, looking at trees outdoors. It's just uh, kind of nasty weather. So, let's head back, back home now, and maybe do some indoor work to our bonsai trees. I'm back home now, and looking at that maple tree kind of reminded me of the structure that I'm trying to develop on my ficus religiosa. It's a very similar type form of tree. You can see the leaves are coming back in on the tree after its last pruning. The leaves are quite tiny right now. They will get bigger, but you can see it still looks really sparse up in the upper canopy. And that's just because it doesn't have a lot of ramification in the branches yet. So the branches are very, you know, a simple structure. I'm building that structure first, and then we'll concentrate on getting finer and finer branching more and more leaves. And as I get more branch tips, the leaves will get smaller and smaller. And uh, hopefully someday it'll look like a, you know, a really nice tree. I've left this branch on the tree. And just because I think without it, the tree would kind of be a little more boring. It kind of breaks up the, what you would expect in a tree with something a little more unusual. So a branch coming up, and kind of integrating it into the upper canopy. I think it'll look, it'll give the tree a little more personality rather than being a typical form of a tree. Uh, yeah, a little more unusual. So I think that'll add to it. And eventually it'll, you know, the bark will change to the same color as the main trunk. It's a little, it's a newer branch right now, but uh, I had removed it several times in the past, but it just, just kept sprouting a new branch there. It just wanted to grow a branch here. So, so I've let it and I, I'm kind of glad I did. I think it'll, as I said, I think it'll give the tree a little personality as it grows older in the future. I'm going to try and find a new pot for it. I want kind of a shallow oval pot and get all those nice radial roots spread out, you know, rather than developing all these roots deep down in the soil. I just want to concentrate on getting a better surface root structure and trying to get that flare from the roots going up 
the base of the tree. It has nice trunk flare now, but I think I can improve that even further in the future. I had pruned off the end of this branch here, and I was hoping to get something coming more horizontally, and I did. I got one down below here, which is really good. So I can either, you know, shorten this upright one here in future, or just cut it off and keep this as my branch tip. So that was a good, uh, good pruning cut there. It gave a good result. I'll have to give Chris, the bonsai guy, a visit soon and try and find a pot for this tree. The tree that I'll be working on today was my very first bonsai tree grown from a seed. It's a ficus microcarpa and it needs a top prune. So the top of the tree is grown really tall. Some of the branches have really taken off. So I got to prune them back to kind of equalize the vigor in the upper canopy. And I've noticed that I've got some spider webbing up there and I think the tree might have spider mites. So I'm going to give that a spray with soap and water just to get rid of that problem. I noticed that on the tree, some of the leaves were shiny and sticky from sap. And that's usually from scale or aphids, but I didn't see any scale on the tree and I don't see any aphids. So I was wondering, what is it? And then I noticed the fine little spider webs between the leaves. And that's a sure sign you have spider mites. So they're just tiny little microscopic bugs that suck the juices out of your leaves and your trunks and branches and everything and just generally weakens your tree. So I'm going to give it a spray with the soap and water and that should clean that up. I'll just spray it every, I don't know, three or four days. These ficus leaves are really tough. They can take you know, soap and water, it doesn't cause any harm to the leaves or the tree. So I'll do that. Um, I will prune the tree first and then we'll give it a spray after that. I'm looking up the trunk of the tree and all the branching is quite nice, except at the back here, I've got a really thick branch that's taking off. And I've noticed that it was getting too thick before, but it had a nice aerial root growing off it. So I didn't want to cut it back in vigor until the aerial root had hit the ground. And it has, it's this one right here. I'll start by giving the tree a profile prune, getting rid of all these long shoots sticking out the top. So this is definitely, you know, the apex of the tree or the top of the canopy. So I, I don't want anything sticking above there. So I will remove one branch at a time using directional pruning. Pruning back to an outwards facing leaf. So at the moment it's quite lopsided. So I'll come in and prune this side from the back here now. Taping some, taking some major trunks off there. The last time this tree was leaf pruned or stripped of all its leaves was almost two years ago. Um, I think it's ready to do that again. I, I think it's, you know, for the last two years, I've just been doing clip and grow. So there's a lot of structure and density that's built up in this upper canopy and it needs the leaves removed so I can go in and do a detailed pruning to figure out what branches I want to keep and what ones I can get rid of just to clean up the structure of the tree. Whenever the top of your tree grows with vigor, so does the roots and they fill this pot. So it's definitely root bound. It could go another year in this soil, but I think the roots would get too tightly packed in the pot and maybe the health of the tree would start to suffer. So I'm going to repot it. And I think the work on this tree will have to wait until part two of this video. I think uh, the kids will be home from school soon. I I've got to make supper for them. I kind of appreciate what a single parent goes through now with my wife gone in Toronto. Uh, she'll be back tomorrow afternoon, so things will be back to normal here in the bonsai zone. This video has been more of a vlog type video. Things will be back to normal in part two. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me today in the bonsai zone. <laughs>